Okay. Hey, everyone's good? All right, so um, I kind of want to do something a little bit different with my presentation, just in the sense that a lot of the stuff that we've been learning about this semester has been really modern stuff. Uh, like, it's just been identifying like green screen, CG elements, particle effects, all that type of stuff. Nothing wrong with that. But just in the sense that, I mean, like a lot of what we're learning today is obviously been influenced by what people did in the past. So I'm going to actually use an older film and kind of uh, address a specific technique known as front screen projection. So pretty much in this. So front screen projection. So what is it? So pretty much, uh, as this goes forward, here you can see a diagram of what front screen projection is. Basically, front screen projection, um, the film that I'm going to use first is uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. So for those of you who are familiar with it, there's a scene in the beginning with uh, a bunch of guys in ape suits and they're in like a desert location. I'll show you that in one second or else I can show you right. So you can see right there. So like this is like the shots from like within the film and everything like that. And pretty much the whole idea behind front screen projection is this idea that you have your actor here represented by this boat object and then you have your camera and then you have a screen, that's, and the screen is known as a scotch light screen. And basically, this screen is uh, made up of like a bunch of, like almost like millions and thousands of little tiny reflective beads that reflect light only in the direction that the light is shot at it. And then, so you have your camera, you have your actor, you have your scotch light, and then you have a projector on a perfect 90 degree angle with the camera. And between the two, you have a 45 degree, or you have a, a, a one-way mirror, a re reflective one-way mirror on a 45 degree angle between the two, and a projector with your background image shooting through the mirror, and then just like showing here so you can see it as a display. So when the camera sees it, it picks up the image being shot through the one-way mirror, and then projects it through onto the scotch light, but at the same time, it doesn't put the image onto the actual actors themselves because it, it, like the actors aren't reflective enough. So like in, in that sense, like kind of what Ben was saying where it was like real-time green screen, this actually was real-time green screen. Um, so the, the actors actually acted as their own mat inside the process of filming. So it was a really, really uh, kind of, it was kind of a tricky thing to do and it took a while for them to master it. And so it wasn't until Kubrick mastered it that it was really uh, being used successfully for the first time. So uh, just a little bit after here, there's actually a small uh, animation that I, I just threw together in After Effects. So you can kind of get an idea of uh, what the 3D space would look like. So you see you got your camera, semi-transparent one-way mirror, the projector, your scotch light screen, and then just does a little rotate here. So you can see like how the projector is going through. That's a, like the display of what's happening on the screen with your image. And the image would just be like a photograph. Uh, in the case of uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, uh, Kubrick pretty much just told a few guys to go out to Spain, take some shots of the desert, had them on high enough resolution, and then you use that in your projector. So pretty much what I want to be able to do with you guys with this presentation is not only show you uh, examples of how this is used and just say, yes, that is front screen projection technique, but I want to actually help you guys kind of develop, develop a bit of a critical eye so you can actually learn to recognize front screen projection as we uh, kind of go through this presentation. So, so I'm just going to let this music play just for a second just to emphasize the dynamics of this presentation. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, 1968 that Kubrick did this. So this is like the first time that this had successfully been shown in a film. So just keep moving forward. Uh, so yeah, here you see like the Dawn of Man. Here you see like these are actual like, this is... These could have been still images, these could have been actual live footage, or probably just would have been still images. But like these are similar to like the plates, like think literally think of them as plates that they would have been using as uh, through the projector for the front screen projection. So here you go here. So you can see here, here is uh, one of the shots that we have here. So pretty much you can see like this rock, obviously this huge rock, this is part of the set. Like the whole idea is that they wanted it to make it so that the set blended in with the background and you can tell that and you can see that like beyond like the bridges here this whole space here that's the scotch light screen and pretty much as we go forward with that you can kind of see there's some more examples so you can see here um, again with this one like it's you can tell you can tell you can tell they're, they're doing a good job of it because it does look well like it looks real and that's exactly the whole point of this 
Um, and you can see, but again, like you can see, like the set kind of goes off around here. Like that rock is possibly real. I, I think it is real. And then like behind this rock is the scotch light. And then like you got your characters like on set here. Like that rock's not too far away. So um, also like the uh, the idea behind doing this is that when working with depth of field, uh, if this is actually shot on location, the resolution of <clears throat> of the background plates would be lost uh, because of the depth of field. Because they're using the front screen projection technique, it keeps full resolution throughout the entire image, and obviously that's what Kubrick wanted. Kubrick really wanted this to be something really, really good, so he put a lot of effort into making it look that good. So you can see again here, uh, I'm going to get into some still images where I increase the contrast so you can see. But again, like you guys can see this, right? Like if you guys, like just let me know the fact that like you guys are understanding what I'm talking about in the sense that you can see, like obviously like here's the set here, the guys are on set, Scotch light is behind it, like makes sense, right? It's pretty, like it's not too, too hard to recognize once you kind of know what you're looking for, right? Right, man. Right, man. <laughs> so you can see here. Um, now again, like with Scotch Light, obviously it's good, but at the same time, there's kind of ways to tell the fact that it is Scotch Light. Uh, for instance, Kubrick's <coughs> Kubrick's set was so large that they actually had to sew together uh, Scotch Light screens. And in some of the images, you can actually see like a bit of a, uh, the, like not necessarily in this one, but you can actually see there's like kind of like uh, sewn together folds in the fabric if you really increase increase the contrast. More so in this shot, uh, what I'm kind of just trying to show here is that um, you can see a bit of like a reflection off of the uh, off, off of like the actual set that's being used there and that reflection is evidence of this use of front screen projection because like the light being shone through the camera and stuff like that and through the projector bouncing off the mirrors bouncing off the scotch light and then reflecting a bit off of the actual surface of the set and you get that little bit of a highlight around the set and sometimes around the actors and stuff like that so so yeah, here you can see, like this is like actually like I drew out here and you can understand like exactly where the set ends and where the scotch light begins. So you guys see that, right? Makes sense? And so here you can see like again, like the whole idea with this is that like he didn't have to use the front screen projection in every single shot in order to like make it look real. Like it, it makes sense for him to have like these close up shots of just the set. Like you don't need to have the front screen projection the entire time to maintain this like believability. You get these close-up shots, and you can barely tell the scotch screen is like it's just in the background, but you're more focused on this shot. So you can see here. I think I got the uh, yeah. I think I had the so uh, yeah. But right here though, like, again, like you can see, like this is like the scotch light runs like right like that's like the actual set. The actual set ends there. All that scotch light. Obviously, like the images are specifically chosen. The lighting on the set is specifically chosen to match the scotch light. And again, like it looks good. Like this is before we had green screen, and not it wasn't really used too many times. And that's an ape being attacked by a tiger, and he fights him off. And can you guess him again? It's kind of very amusing. Uh, so yeah, and. Uh, Moving forward with this, you can, again, you can see like this is a bit of a contrast. You can see there's a bit of highlights around the edges, and just keep moving forward. Like my, see, so especially you can see it here. You can actually see like the light reflecting off the surface because of the scotch light. And another interesting thing is in this shot, you see the reflection in that. Uh, I guess it's, it's that. What type of ant? Leopard, I guess. Yeah. Uh, you can see the reflection in the leopard's eyes. That reflection, in a sense, is evidence of front screen projection. Because of the light bouncing off the 45 degree one-way mirror, it's bouncing off that and it's bouncing off the actual leopard's eyes. If they were just filming this with a camera, you wouldn't get that reflection coming straight at the camera. Because like, you lose the reflection off his eyes as soon as he kind of like goes beyond the range of the camera. That's so much so showing that the light is coming from the direct angle of the camera because of the mirrors placed there specifically. So again, like it, it's it's a little thing like that, but I mean, if you don't know why his eyes are like that, you wouldn't have any idea that it was used for front screen projection. And again, like this shot looks good. Like that shot looks very believable. Like as far as you know, that could be an actual sky. So again, like Kubrick did a very good job of uh, trying to perfect this. And here you can see some night shots. So again, like night shots, uh, they look just as believable, I would think. There's nothing like nothing particularly wrong about them. Maybe like the contrast on the rocks kind of stands out, but I mean that's pretty much how it would look in real life. Uh, so and then here's the scene with the obelisk, just so you guys know. So this obelisk uh, kind of like represents this like knowledge being passed on to the humans and forcing them to evolve through kind of like this 
whole like shift in consciousness and stuff like that. So it's just kind of like opening up their eyes to new ideas and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. Um, so then here's a monkey smashing a skull. And there's more epic music.